what is going on everyone welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to be taking a look at computed properties so for those of you who don't know there are multiple types of properties in the language stored computed and others uh, we're going to look at computed today so here we are on swift's own documentation on swift.org and here we've got a brief summary of a computed property. And as the name implies, it's basically a property that gets computed by other uh, things going on in your class or other variables. So we'll take a look at why you would want this in a playground, uh, some quick examples, and then we'll jump into a project as always to look at a more practical example. So that said, make sure you destroy that like button as always for the YouTube algorithm. Hit subscribe if you're a returning viewer and have not done so already. Get excited, open up Xcode, and let's dive right in. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. In addition, to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so I've got Xcode opened up here. I'm gonna come up here and go to File, New, and we're gonna start with a playground. And we can stick with a blank playground. I'll go ahead and call this playground Computed Props Playground. And let's uh, center this window and also expand it a little bit to give ourselves some more room to work here. Yeah, let me bump this font size a little bit to make sure we can all see it. So cool, let's start by creating a class and we're gonna call this class a person and it's gonna have an initializer that takes no parameters. Let's give it some uh, stored properties on here. So we'll say let name equals Dan Smith. So lowercase that M. We'll say Dan has an age or person has an age. Let's go with 18. Uh, let's go with height in inches, let's do height in feet rather. And we'll say he's six foot tall. Uh, and let's say we wanted to uh, use this person. And let's say we have an application where we wanna check the eligibility of a person to sign up for our app. And let's say we wanna make sure each person object, which presumably is a model in our app, is uh, going to have an age on it that the user submits. So let's say we have a person, uh, sorry, his name is Dan. So we're gonna say this is person. And we want a computed property in here, which is gonna say, uh, can sign up. So let's say we wanna ensure that everyone that signs up is an adult, AKA 18 years of age or older. So we would create this computed property as follows. Um, rather, before we even create this computed property, one way we can do this is we can say, if dan.age is greater than 18, go ahead and continue. But computer properties can add uh, a level of convenience, uh, better readability and cleanness to our code. So let's put this else here. So we can say uh, else cannot sign up. This should be greater than or equal to. And this is a little annoying if we want to keep using this across our app. We consistently have to check the age. We can possibly screw up this greater than or equal to check. Let's say somewhere uh, we forget to add the equal. So it can turn into a bit of a mess pretty fast. So enter in computer properties. So computer property can be used as follows. You basically create a variable. It's not a constant because it's computed every time. And we're going to say can sign up. It's gonna to return to us a bool. Notice there's uh, no equal sign here. And here we're gonna return if age is greater than or equal to 18. Whoops, not 19, 18. And now instead of using this uh, age check down here, we can basically say if Dan can sign up. So what are the advantages here? Well, firstly, we only have one place where we're doing this greater than or equal to check, making it less uh, brittle. The second thing is that 
Uh, it is improved readability in the sense of can sign up from a developer perspective is much more cognizant of what we're actually doing here versus checking if the user's age property is above 18. Now, in theory, right, they do the exact same thing, but this just, to me, let's say I'm a new developer on a team building this app, is much more readable and easier to understand from a human perspective. And in, at the end of the day, what we can actually also do is, let's say we want to add another check in here, but let's say we want to make sure that everybody si that signs up is uh, also six feet tall or higher, we can also adjust this and it'll get adjusted across our app with a simple change here. So we can also say if height in feet is greater than or equal to six, right? Uh, this way, let's see what we're getting issues about here. We need two ands there. So basically, the point is, the takeaway rather, is this makes our code less uh, kind of break proof, less fragile. It's uh, co-located, it's easier to edit if we wanna ever make changes, and it's improved readability. So that all said, let's jump into a project and take a look at a pretty common example that people do across projects and something that I strongly advocate for myself. So let's close that, let's do file new, and we're gonna do a new project here. And let's stick with a single view application. And I'm going to go ahead and call this computed property uh, project. And let's go ahead and save this to our desktop. And let's get into it. So what we're going to actually do is we are going to come to our view controller and we're going to create a simple view. So let's come in here and let's say let view equals, uh, let's say my view so it doesn't conflict with the naming is a UI view, we're gonna say my views background color is going to be a system blue. And we're gonna add this as a sub view to the view controller's view. And let's simply start by giving this a frame. And we're gonna say the frame is something along the lines of zero, zero, 100 and 100. And next up, let's pick a simulator up here. Move this window down a little bit. Let's pick a simulator up here and run the app. Let's go with, let's go with the eight here. Hit that run button to build and run the app. Give it a second to run. And we'll end up seeing that we have a, uh, basically a blue square showing up in the top left corner of our view controller. Bear with it. Simulators love to be slow. There it is, awesome. So cool. So let's say we wanted to make this uh, view half the width of the screen uh, make it half the height of the screen as well, and then center it. Let's talk about how we can do that. So for the width, we would basically say the width is view.frame.size.width over two. And we would say this is the height, whoops, over two. That gives you width and height. And I'm aware we can do my view.center, but we're not gonna do that for this example. Uh, for X and Y, basically what we would do is as follows. So let me make this a property called width. We'll say this is width. And let's go ahead and make this a property called height. And we'll say this is height. And the X is going to be uh, the width, view.frame.size.width of the entire view minus width divided by two. And the height similarly, rather the Y similarly will be the height subtracting height divided by two. So go ahead and run this, let's see what we get. So cool, it's basically what we expect. It's centered uh, horizontally and vertically, and the sizing is half the size of the respective axis, so the width and the height. How can we simplify this code with a computed property? Basically, if you take a look at it, we're doing the same verbose code of view, frame, size, width, over and over. So we can shorthand this by adding a custom computed properties on a UI view extension. So we're gonna add an extension to UI view, which if you're not familiar, just adds functionality to the UI view class. We're gonna create a property called width, which will be a CG float. And we're simply going to return in here, frame.size.width. And what this lets us do now is we can drop all of this. 
and we can drop all of this because we now have this new computer property, which is dot width, which internally simply does that frame dot size business. Now you can take this to pretty extreme lengths. So let's say we added one for height and we do the same one for height. Let's get rid of this stuff. Let's also get rid of this stuff. And our code is already looking a lot cleaner. So let's, let's see what else we can do. So currently our view looks like this. Now, what if we wanted to add a view that's right below this? In theory, you would calculate the height and the Y, but that's a little cumbersome and annoying. So why don't we add another property here called bottom? And this will be a computed property as well. And the bottom of any frame is essentially the frame's origin Y position, basically where it is from the top, adding the frame's size dot height, or we can even add height directly because that's already doing that here. And now if we wanted to add another view that's just at the bottom of this my view, let's say second view is the UI view. Let's give this guy a background color of green. Let's add it as a sub view, uh, second view, and let's give it a frame. We can say, let's say CG rect uh, zero. This one's gonna be my view dot bottom. The width will be view dot width and the height will be 50. And let's go ahead and run this and see what it looks like. So if you run it here, you see it's right at the bottom of this blue view, which is actually exactly what we want to be showing here. And that's basically the power of a computed property being used to not only simplify your code in terms of readability, where we got rid of this redundant frame.size uh, business, but we can also do things that are more readable, like bottom. Bottom is much better uh, in terms of a name for how we're laying our code out here, right? Instead of doing something like frame.size.width uh, or height plus frame.origin.y, that gets a redundant. It's a lot more code to type out, but it's also less clear to me from a developer perspective of what the heck it's supposed to be doing. And this to me makes a lot more sense and the way it's written out. Now notice that these are all computed properties. They're not assigned with an equal. They're uh, kind of contingent on other things, right? So in this case, the bottom is the current Y plus the current height. And that's basically the nature of a property that you're computing based on current factors. And that's about it. That's how you would use a computed property. Uh, if you haven't hit that like button already, make sure to do so for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe if you found the video useful. Uh, if you're a returning viewer, helps grow the channel, of course. Comment any questions, concerns, suggestions. Love hearing from you guys. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.